Um, and so I wanted to kind of discuss, because I've been asked to discuss this before, um, and it mostly pertains to me, but I think it most likely pertains to a lot of veterinarians, um, what type of nutrition education do veterinarians get and i think there is a lot of misinformation out there i think that misinformation is coming from third parties who didn't obviously go into veterinary school and i never like it when you lump of grump a group of people together and say all veterinarians don't know about nutrition because of xyz um, and so rather than do the same thing and reciprocate and say no that's not true all veterinarians do get xyz i'm going to focus on my experience, my personal experience, my firsthand experience. And I think it's most likely very similar to other veterinarians' experiences, and I think it's probably more accurate than a random, you know, third party um, that, that came up with this. And you can you can you can probably guess why the third party and who the third party is that came up with this and, and what motives they may have had to try to strike a stake between trust between you and your veterinarian. So really think about that because um, that's a pretty nefarious endeavor, I feel. But nonetheless, I do want to share with you um, nutrition education and answer that question as it at least pertains to me um, in the year that I graduated. Certainly, it could have changed, um, you know, in, in the time that has transpired. So um, when you go into veterinary school, there is prerequisites that you have to have, right? Um, you can get into veterinary school pretty much with any degree you want, as long as you have the prerequisite. So many of us are, um, you know, from the sciences, you know, biology, zoology, things like that. But you can go to veterinary school, and there are people in my class that, you know, had like literature degrees. But regardless of that, you do have to take some prerequisites. And one of those prerequisites is animal nutrition. This is animal nutrition that is not taken through the veterinary school, okay? So I know one of the big conspiracy theories is the big three pay veterinary schools and so they teach them um, whatever the curriculum that they want. Well, we're talking about animal nutrition taught at an undergraduate level um, as an, you know, as an undergraduate degree through every university across the nation. Um, and it just, that's just insane to think that the big kibble is paying off every single um, educational institution you know, across the nation, okay, across the world. And so um, you have to take a, a, an animal nutrition class. That animal nutrition class is not um, 20 hours. I don't know. I've heard that number thrown around. I don't I don't know where it came from, honestly. Um, that's why it's important to check your sources. I don't I don't know where that number came from, 20 hours. Um, it, it's a course. And I think it's listed in my, my, my description box, but it's like booty in the chair. When I was there, it was no online. It was booty in the chair. Booty in the chair for an entire semester, um, five days a week booty in the chair and um you know that's way more than 20 hours i can tell you that and the tests are not online tests um they are booty in the chair writing down answering questions paper test okay and so um office hours you can ask questions there's a teacher's assistant you can ask questions i mean it's a legit a legit educational course that's just undergrad everybody has to take that it's a requirement then you go into veterinary school and the first year of veterinary school at least at my my university, um, is broad topics, right? It's broad topics. It's anatomy of the large animal, anatomy of the small animal. Um, I think they call them body systems. So big groups of body systems. Um, so so large topics, and um, you know that's just kind of getting your feet wet. The second, third, and fourth year is where you get into the nitty gritty. Um, and that's when you start doing individual organ systems, um, individual disciplines. So that's all your ologies, okay? Um, it's also where you start getting into the clinic and you start clinically practicing some of the things, forming differentials, forming diagnosis, seeing cases. That happens in your um, part of your second year and then again in your fourth year. And so what are the ologies? The ologies are like every single system, guys. I mean, we're talking about every single system for every single species, okay? So we're talking cardiology, dermatology, neurology, um, orthopedic surgery, soft tissue surgery, um, urology, endocrinology, toxicology, pharmacology. I mean, I have, if I can find the picture anywhere, I have a picture when I graduated vet school, my very last day of clinics, standing against the wall and my stack of books of all the ologies was 
taller than me, okay? Every single one. Actually, let me see. Yeah, I can't even grab them. I still have them. They're in a, they're in a closet here. Not all of them, as I, I've moved like six or seven times, so I've lost. I was looking for my nutrition one to see if I still had it. I can't find it anywhere. So it's got misplaced somewhere. But nutrition is one of those. It's one of those classes that you've taken throughout, you know, one of those specific courses. And again, it's a semester. We're not booty in the chair. This is not online. This is a semester class. You're sitting there for, I think it was a two, two, it might have been two or three hour block a day that we sat there and did it for an entire semester. And if you want to know what you learned in that class, look at that small animal clinical nutrition book. That's not the textbook we had. Again, I told you I've lost my textbook, but that's the kind of stuff that we learn. The science behind nutrition, the literal science behind it. Um, and that's what you learn in that nutrition class, however many hours it is. I don't know how many it was. Um, and there's a difference between a credit hour and a contact hour. So that's another thing. I think maybe that's where this 20 hour thing, you know, maybe came about was credit hour. I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, nutrition is was a class just like neurology was, endocrinology was. Um, so the same amount of time that I learned about diabetes is the same amount of time that I learned about nutrition, the same amount of time that I learned about um, kidneys, same thing. Orthopedic surgery, same thing. The only ones that were longer were internal medicine um, and some of the surgery, soft tissue surgery classes were really, 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 really long because, you know, that's that's a lot. That's a big block there. Um, the internal medicine is just a lot of stuff. It's not just an ology. So, um, you know, that that's how the individual classes work. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop there, right? Okay. So why did I bring up these cases as an example? Because in every single one of those other ologies, um, nutrition is broached upon as well. And so even if I were to acquiesce and say, okay, yeah, it was 20 hours in my clinical nutrition class, it doesn't account for all the nutrition you learn in every single other class. So when I had my endocrinology class and I learned a diet about diabetes, I learned about the diets to treat and prevent diabetes. When I had my renal class, we learned about what the disease pathology is and how diet can be used to treat and prevent that pathology. Not a specific diet, the science behind the diet. When I learned about um, putting this e-tube in, I had to learn about how to formulate and calculate and ensure that everything I put in that e-tube is proper daily nutrition for that pet. It's not eating anything else. When I was in school, I had a case um, that was severely diabetic and had to be on TPN, which is a total parenteral nutrition. Learned that outside of my nutrition course. So every single class, dermatology, zinc responsive dermatosis, vitamin A responsive dermatosis, all these things are touched upon. Nutrition is touched upon in every single one of those classes. And so it's not just as simple as saying, well, how many hours of a nutrition class did you take? I probably could figure that out, but I can't figure out all this ancillary stuff, um, all this additional stuff you learn every single class. When you're in surgery, okay, what do pets need to be eating after surgery? If they have cancer, what do they need to be eating after their chemo? You know, how can we, you know, what foods are acceptable? What foods aren't acceptable? Which foods are contraindicated? Integrative medicine, I took a class in integrative medicine. That's a whole nother ballpark and how Western versus Eastern medicine, okay? So I just wanted to throw that out there for food for thought and, and please always think about, um, when people are trying to promote their cause by putting another cause down and talking negatively about them because that should be your first warning side to think um you know maybe i should maybe i should ask the source and that's what i ask you guys and i'm thankful for the maybe the one subscriber that said look i've been hearing all this and i want i want to ask you personally what training um did you get and so i do appreciate that because i don't like i don't like to be um not falsely accused but you know what i mean I just want, if you have a question about your veterinarian and you question whether, um, you know, what they have or if, if they feel comfortable with something, just ask them, hey, do you feel comfortable with this? Do you feel comfortable with, um, you know, managing this case uh, with nutrition or should, should I see a boarded, um, you know, nutritionist? That's fine. They're there. They're available and that's what they're available for if your personal veterinarian doesn't feel comfortable with it. So that's kind of my take on that. And I wanted to um, express to you that, yeah, we do nutrition every single day. Every single day I do in my practice. Um, right here, three cases imperative, but that doesn't even count, you know, the number of other cases that we talked about, especially the wellness exams and things like that. And so um, that's, that's how nutrition is taught in veterinary school. At least that's how I was taught nutrition in veterinary school. So I wanted to highlight that today and answer some of those, um, those questions because they seem to be circulating a lot.